Laryngotracheal stenosis is scar that develops at the level of the vocal cords, an area just below the vocal cords called the subglottis or in the trachea. And when the scar progresses to a certain extent, it can obstruct airflow into the lungs and cause difficulty breathing. There are three main causes of laryngotracheal stenosis. The most common is caused by breathing tubes and or tracheostomy tubes, where the placement of these tubes causes scar to develop in the subglottis or trachea, obstructing airflow to the lungs and causing difficulty breathing. This is called iatrogenic laryngotracheal stenosis. The second main cause is autoimmune disease. And there's a specific autoimmune disease called granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly known as Wegner's, that in about 15 to 20% of those cases, individuals develop subglottic stenosis. And they develop scar just below the vocal cords in that area of the subglottis. The third main cause is something called idiopathic subglottic stenosis. And this is a um, unusual disease, as the name sounds. It, is, um, it exclusively affects women, um, and it develops spontaneously uh, when women are in their 40s or 50s. It's a rare disease, only uh, affecting about one in 200,000 um, American women. And uh, because it develops relatively slowly, um, the average time to diagnosis is over two years. Many women carry a diagnosis of asthma, but don't respond to inhalers. And it's not until they get to see a ear, nose, and throat physician or a laryngologist who looks just below the vocal cords and notices the scar that is sitting in the subglottis. The traditional therapies for the treatment of idiopathic subglottic stenosis are exclusively surgical. The mainstay surgery is something called an endoscopic excision and dilation, where the surgeon operates through your mouth, cuts the scar, and then places a balloon dilator to open up the airway. The second surgery is called a cricotracheal resection, and that's done through your neck where the scar is cut out of the subglottis and the trachea, and then the remnant trachea is sewn back to the larynx. Since 2015, there have been uh, three new treatments for idiopathic subglottic stenosis. The first is one that can be done in the office, and it's called serial intralesional steroid injections where steroid, usually Kenalog 40, is injected directly into the scar tissue. It is usually a series of three or more injections spaced four weeks apart. The second is a endoscopic surgery that is performed through the mouth. This is called the Mattern Endoscopic Laryngotracheoplasty, where the scar tissue is actually shaved out uh, from the subglottis and the trachea. And then a skin graft line stent is placed for two weeks to reline the subglottis and trachea. The third therapy is also surgical, and it is called an endoscopic laser wedge resection, where large sections of the scar tissue are cut out of the subglottis and trachea using a laser. Here at Johns Hopkins, we have a multidisciplinary complex airway team that's made up of thoracic surgeons, interventional pulmonologists, and multiple ENT airway surgeons, where the focus is on the patient and coming together to provide the best possible care for each and every patient we're taking care of. We're also training tomorrow's airway surgeons with fellows in each of our subspecialties. We have successfully introduced the Mattern surgery 
for idiopathic subglottic stenosis. We've performed this on a large number of patients and have a 75 to 80% success rate where patients no longer need any surgery for their disease. We also have a thriving research program. Since 2012, we have been partnering with patients who've enrolled in multiple studies and more recently in clinical trials. It is their willingness to work together with us that has allowed us to advance care for idiopathic subglottic stenosis. We have an NIH-funded lab that is actively looking into the reasons why idiopathic subglottic stenosis develops. As part of that, we are developing and testing new treatments for the disease. In 2024, we completed the first interventional clinical trial titled Everolimus in idiopathic subglottic stenosis that showed that Everolimus, an mTOR inhibitor, is safe for use in idiopathic subglottic stenosis patients. And we are also developing a drug-eluting stent that we're translating for use in our patients.